Can you imagine how it would be to book a flight without that nagging sense of guilt over your carbon footprint? Have you ever wondered what it would be like to fly above the clouds without the roar of a jet engine? Well, let me tell you how that dream could be closer to reality than you think. My name is Heather Au, and I'm working on developing technologies for sustainable energy storage. Sustainability is something I think about a lot, and I think I have that in common with lots of people of my generation. Most of my friends, we try to cut down on the amount of meat we eat, we try to shop more sustainably, consume less, buy secondhand. When I look at the younger generations in my family or the children of my friends, I often wonder what their futures will look like. Fossil fuel-powered transportation contributes about a fifth of the world's CO2 emissions. So electrification of transport is a really important step that we can take towards decarbonising and avoiding the climate catastrophe. Humanity is dependent on fossil fuels because they have a really high energy density. That means they can deliver a huge amount of energy per kilogram and that makes them really practical. We need this rapid shift towards truly renewable energy sources like solar and wind. To allow this transition to happen, we really need ways of storing energy and for that we need batteries. The rechargeable batteries in our laptops, phones and cars all have the same basic working principle. We have an anode and a cathode that are both able to store ions and they're separated by an electrolyte through which the ions can pass but electrons can't. When you connect the two electrodes through an external circuit, ions flow from the anode to the cathode, while electrons flow externally around the circuit, and that provides the current used to drive your device. The reverse process happens when you charge your battery. The electrons and the ions move in the opposite direction, back from the cathode to the anode. The majority of these batteries are based on lithium-ion technology with positive electrodes containing many critical elements, for example, nickel, manganese or cobalt. 70% of cobalt is from the Democratic Republic of Congo and is obtained through unethical mining practices. Over 50% of our nickel is sourced in Indonesia, where huge environmental and social issues are being caused by the runoff from open pit mines. There's clearly a pressing ethical obligation to develop tech that's based on abundant renewable materials. My current research focuses on lithium sulfur batteries. These batteries replace critical elements like cobalt and nickel at the cathode with sulfur, which is far more abundant and easily sourced. The advantage of sulfur is that it has a much higher energy density ceiling because of the different electrochemical reactions that can happen inside the battery. If we compare the electrochemical reactions in a lithium-ion battery and lithium sulfur battery, we can see that for a given mass of active material, far more lithium ions and electrons can be transferred, which means we can store more energy in the lithium sulfur battery. Now let's look at some of these functional benefits with a practical example. If you were to replace the fuel tanks in a jet airliner with an equivalent energy capacity of existing lithium-ion batteries, it would weigh so much that it would never even get off the ground. Another very exciting potential of lithium sulfur batteries is that thanks to their simplified structure, they might be more flexible in terms of the shapes they could be built into. This would allow us to move away from devoting large volumes within a vehicle to storing a solid block of batteries and enable the design of an electric plane with a structural chassis actually made of the batteries that power its engines. This would obviously save a lot of total weight by combining structure with energy storage. There are already examples of electric planes in development that could carry 30 to 70 passengers on short haul flights for long-haul flights, manufacturers have recognised the benefits that larger hybrid planes will bring in cutting emissions. These would take off and land with electric motors, but would use conventional engines to power propellers or recharge batteries while in the air during long-haul flights. The potential benefits of lithium sulfur batteries could be key in the development of much larger fully electric aeroplanes.
There may even be potential for redesigning the shape of the aircraft once you leave behind the constraints of the traditional jet engine, improving weight, speed and cost of the planes themselves. My current research practice involves fabricating carbon fibre mats from lignin, a byproduct of the papermaking industry. I use a process called electrospinning to make a non-woven carbon fibre mat structure, onto which I deposit lithium or sulphur to make the electrodes. These mats are then used to make and test battery designs to see how well they perform. I'm working on improving the strength and structure of these carbon fibres so that they can not only store a huge amount of energy, but also provide mechanical reinforcement inside the battery. These batteries are just one part of the puzzle in transitioning to a world powered by renewable energy sources. We clearly need a whole range of energy storage solutions, for example, sodium ion batteries or hydrogen fuel cells, amongst others. It's a really exciting time to be working in the field right now. It's great to be working with so many people who are passionate about what they do, who have great ideas. Apart from the fact that I find the science really interesting, I also think about how the world will look in 20 or 30 years time. And I think about what I can do to try and make a difference. When I imagine if something we produce in this lab could contribute to achieving net zero, that makes me so excited and that really spurs me on to continue doing the work that I do.